Now let's start. The first thing we discussed this last time as well with the atrial um, uh, multifocal atrial tachycardia, the abnormal impulse terms. I'm going to refine those terms a little more in this discussion as we evolve our thoughts. So first of all, automaticity. So look, the, the idea of automaticity is simply this, that any part of our heart, any tissue of our heart that can be automatic, which means pacemaker, we know that SA node can be automatic or is automatic, correct? SA node. We know that AV node is usually not automatic because SA node takes over. However, AV node can become automatic or become a pacemaker if needed. And then we also know that Purkinje system, the Purkinje fibers can actually become pacemakers as well if we need them to be. For example, if the other pacemakers have failed, then these Purkinje fibers, these fibers can also become Purkinje fibers can also become pacemakers and most importantly the even the myocardial tissue can become a pacemaker if we need it to be. Now just remember one thing myocardial cells do not become pacemaker in normal situations. It has to be an abnormality of the cell itself that it has become a pacemaker. Automaticity is of course the capability of spontaneous depolarization. I can say that automaticity is of two types. It is possible that the normal automatic tissue which is the SA node, AV node, normal pacemakers when their activity becomes increased or reduced this will be called enhanced normal automaticity or depressed normal automaticity. On the other hand, when you find cells that should not be pacemaker, for example, myocardial cells or Purkinje cells, and they are now become automatic or depolar, they, are, they have become pacemakers, and then they are either creating extra rate, increased rate or reduced rate, then that will be called, let's say, enhanced abnormal automaticity when the rate is increased. Enhanced abnormal automaticity is what I said. So automaticity simply means a pacemaker activity anywhere in the heart by a tissue that is capable of being a pacemaker. And if that automaticity changes, then it will be called change in the automaticity, either enhanced or depressed. Why is it important for today's lecture? Proximal atrial tachycardia, one of the pathology in it is enhanced abnormal automaticity. Enhanced abnormal automaticity, I said, not normal. If SA node is creating increased heart rate, that is sinus tachycardia. That is enhanced normal automaticity. We will talk about it today that in the case of the um, proximal atrial tachycardia or focal atrial tachycardia, it is the abnormal tissue, the tissue that should not be the pacemaker has become the pacemaker and has started doing the uh, pacemaker activity. Okay, moving on to the next one, the drivers. We talked about it as well last time. Drivers are actually all those abnormal tissues that are not pacemakers but, but that have become pacemakers and that have started depolarizing, for example, in case of the, the fibrillation, atrial fibrillation, we saw that the myocardial tissue cells that were around the pulmonary vein opening. So if this is a pulmonary vein and if it opens here, there is a sleeve of, there is a sleeve of myocardial cells around that and when these cells become abnormal and they become pacemakers, these cells are called drivers. Enhanced abnormal automaticity of any tissue 
can also mean that that tissue is now a driver. The need for a driver, the definition for a driver is that driver does not need someone else to trigger it. Driver will be triggered by itself. It has become automatic. It will become depolarized by itself. Then, of course, we talked about it last time, re-entry and in the re-entry, I will not go in detail, re-entry is of so many types and due to so many pathologies, at our level, this is sufficient to say that if the, the impulse travels through, let's say these are the two pathways and I, I make this all the time, so I hope you, you have become familiar with this diagram now, this is a diagram for re-entry where where impulse comes in and it goes through two pathways and one of the pathway is slower either it is slow because the heart has dilated and the path has become longer that is in any stretch of atria or ventricle or the heart cells are not elongated but they are damaged enough by ischemia or hypoxia or infarction or infections or myopathies that the impulse is traveling slow or just lack of energy and the channels are not working correctly impulse is traveling slow enough slow that when it reach back here where it should come and die instead of dying it actually just re-enters the circuit and now it would just get trapped and keep cir circling here and this has become an abnormal pacemaker now. It has become a circuit that has trapped an impulse and it would continue like fireworks. It will continue to give off the new impulses and these impulses would of course cause tachycardias or fibrillations and stuff like that. Next one is the triggered activity. Now, uh, please remember in the proximal atrial tachycardia, the two main mechanisms that we should remember is enhanced abnormal automaticity and second is the re-entry. Proximal atrial tachycardia usually does not result from triggered activity. Remember, triggered activity was a phenomena that was uh, happening in uh, multifocal atrial tachycardia. So we know that in triggered activity, I'll just do this much, that one cell receives an impulse and that impulse, because of some abnormality in the cell, that impulse becomes multiplied or de more depolarizations occur and we talked about it that there is early after depolarization and late after depolarization and the phenomena of that depolarization is discussed in the proximal atrial tachycardia lecture but this is the triggered activity. Why triggered? Because we need a trigger, we need an impulse to come in and then the cell, the myocardium or the tissue cell is enough abnormal that it converts one impulse into multiple impulses which you are seeing here. So of course this would cause tachycardia, this would cause arrhythmias, this can cause fibrillation and so on. So these are the impulse terms that are important. For our lecture today, for the focal atrial tachycardia, proximal atrial tachycardia, the terms that are more important to keep in mind are enhanced abnormal automaticity and re-entry. Okay, let's continue. <laughs> 